Hello, 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 hello. I want to discuss with you the solution of our single slit diffraction problem. We have a vertical slit, very, very narrow, opening only 0.1 millimeters. We shine a red laser on it, 650 nano meters wavelengths and we look at the pattern at the diffraction pattern on the wall which is three meters away from the slit and we see a pattern that I described you will see on the wall quite bright maximum and then you see points on the side with zero intensity. We call that destructive interference. And then you see a little bit more light and again another destructive interference and another destructive interference. And you see them on both sides. And here you see the curve, the intensity of the light as a function of x on the wall. Split the vertical. <laughs> I did not ask you to calculate what, for instance, the light intensity is here and there compared to the maximum. I didn't ask you that. But just in case, I want you to know that it is very low at this very first sub-maximum, if you want to call it. It's only 4.7% of the center and it is at the other sub maxima even lower. The question now is what on the wall in terms of millimeters is the distance on the wall between this point here which is destructive interference no light and that point here destructive interference no light. That's the question. As I said earlier, it is really a high school problem, but nevertheless, interesting. This is the opening of the slit. The slit is in this direction. It has an opening capital D, which is 0.1 millimeters. Now, Three meters away is a screen. This is not to scale. I draw a line from the middle of the slit in this direction at an angle theta and I draw a line from this point at that same angle theta with this line. If this distance which is the difference in the distance to the wall in this direction and the distance to the wall in that direction, if that distance is lambda over 2, this teeny weeny little light pole point, we call them Huygens sources, and this teeny weeny little Huygens source will destructively interfere when they reach the wall because the wavelength difference is half a wavelength. That is equivalent to 180 degree phase change. So the sum of them is zero. You may argue, well, are these two lines parallel to go to the wall? Well, this is only 0.1 millimeter and the wall is three meters away. So if I go to a particular point on the wall, it's totally reasonable that you consider these lines to be parallel. You will see how small these angles are very shortly. So what it means, if this point here, this Huygens source here, kills this Huygens source there, then the one just below there will kill the point just below here. 
and the one below that will kill the point just below there. So you can always find, if you pick any point here as a Huygens source, you will always find one here that exactly, again, cancel each other. Because the difference in path lengths will then also be lambda over 2. So all these objects, all these Huygens sources, will kill each other. That means destructive interference. And so I only showed it to you for the very first zero, which we discussed. And so we can calculate now that the sine of this angle, and I call that 1 because it is the first destructive interference, is then, because the line theta, theta is of course also theta here, I hope you see that. So the sine of theta 1 is lambda over 2 divided by p over 2. And that is lambda over d, and that is 0 0.00650. And so the angle at which you have the first destructive interference is only 0.37 degrees. Extremely low. <laughs> this is not to scale. Now here is the wall, which is three meters away, but I drew it here. And let here be the point where there is the first destructive interference on one side of the high maximum and here is the point of destructive interference on the other side. And we want to know now what this distance is between these two points in millimeters. Well, clearly this here is L times the tangent of the angle theta. You can make that triangle for yourself. But we want the whole thing. And so we have to multiply by 2. And so W, which stands for Walter, is 2L tangent theta. By the way, the tangent theta is also, to a high degree of accuracy, exactly the same as the sine of theta, you try it, you will see that that's always the case for small angles. And so you'll find then that W is 39 millimeters. Think about that for a minute. It is 390 times larger than the slit width. That's the consequence of diffraction. Amazing, isn't it? 390 times larger. 650 nanometers, by the way, was the wavelength. Um, I give you here something that you may want to prove for yourself. I will not do that here. If n is an integer, and n is the nth, n for Nancy, is the nth destructive interference, so n equals 1 is the first destructive interference. The sign for theta of n is n lambda over d. I'd like you to think about that and prove that. So in all the cases that sign theta of n is n times lambda over d, where n is an integer, you will have destructive interference we were only concerned in this problem with n equals 1. So, the reason why I gave you this relatively simple problem is that the next problem, I will need this result. Yeah, I'm sure that I will make that the next problem. Okay, so this wasn't very difficult, but it is interesting, isn't it? I gave eight lectures for NHK TV in Japan. They were all recorded at MIT. And in lecture number seven, I do a demonstration, a single slit diffraction. 
And what I do there is I make the slit narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower and narrower. What you will see, since the sine of theta is lambda divided by d, if you make d smaller and smaller, the angle psi will become larger and larger and larger. And you will see in a very dramatic way how large w, which is the distance between the two destructive interference points, number one, how that becomes enormously large. It's worth watching. NHK from Japan, Lecture 7. There is a special playlist for my NHK lectures. You have to watch the time from 57 minutes and 29 seconds to about 58 minutes and 44 seconds. And during that time, I make the slit smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, but doesn't change anything. I don't change capital L. I don't change the wavelengths, of course. So that may help you to get sort of to see, to see with your own eyes the dependence on 1 over d in the sign. All right then. Have a nice day, take care, and yes, I'm sure you want to be friends. And the next problem, I will need this result. Not very difficult either, but it's also interesting. <laughs>